Fred Ridley has more than 25 years of experience representing developers of high-end real estate projects. He's a partner with Foley and Lardner and the firm's national chair of its real estate practice. Fred, it's good to have you with us. And it goes beyond just real estate development, uh, high-end resorts, golf communities. And there's a reason you're in the, of any partner, at Foley and Lardner, and what you have 900 some attorneys, right. would be in the golf area, it would be you. I have to brag on you just okay. a little bit. One time, a U.S. amateur champion decided, and I asked him a long time ago, why didn't you go pro? I just wasn't for me. Uh, so you became an attorney, and uh, you seem fulfilled and happy. Also a former president of the U.S. Golf Association. So you have all that background, but that you bring a lot to the table when it comes to varied projects. And we've been through, uh, I think, economy goes through cycles and you have your boom period and your your bust period so where are we now are we rebounding are you seeing more projects coming to the table uh, Frank uh, first it's great to be here uh, uh, with regard to uh, a rebound I think in certain segments we are rebounding uh, uh, some are, 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 are more uh, rapid than others but um, in the in the area that I work in the hospitality and resort area it's been it's been a, a bit of a slow recovery but uh, we're seeing pockets of, of recovery um, We've been fortunate to, just this past month, uh, have been involved in two of the largest transactions that have taken place uh, outside the state, actually. Uh, one at uh, Reynolds Plantation up in Georgia and another at a project in South Carolina. But, um, you know, that, that really is, uh, is an indication that, uh, as a law firm, we need to be focusing uh, our efforts on, on credentialing in industries where we're recognized as leaders in those industries. So there'll, there'll be enough transactions that will come our way if we do that. Take me through the process a little bit. Someone, a developer, comes in and says, I want to acquire this much property and I want to build either a golf course community, a residential community, or I want to build a, a golf resort. And we have some great ones here. In fact, I think it's interesting that the Florida delegation is staying at Innisbrook this week. And I believe in other delegations, some are staying at Saddlebrook, two of our premier golf resorts. But when someone comes to you and say, I have this chunk of land, they can't just go build it. They need legal guidance to get right. through to make sure it's an appropriate use of that land, correct? That's right. It's, it's, a, it's a lengthy process. Um, it's, uh, it's becoming more difficult every year. Uh, there's a, a myriad of uh, environmental regulations, uh, land use regulations that you have to look at before you even get to the uh, uh, some of the other issues, but it, it, the first thing really that we try to encourage our clients to look at are really are what are the economics? You know, does this make economic sense? And, and I think in the environment we're in today, that's becoming more and more challenging. But it's like everything else. You've got you've got great developers, great operators, and they they will find the right projects. Uh, Maybe retooling an existing project. So there's a lot of those opportunities that we're seeing. Do you think at one point, uh, in particular, golf course communities became somewhat overbuilt? There was a glut. Uh, of golf courses and therefore so many options that you really had to stay on top of your game uh, to retain, say you're a private club, retain your members, or if you're not a private club, get sufficient play to support the community or, or the golf course itself. There's no question about that. Uh, if you go back 10 or 15 years, uh, there was a survey uh, by the National uh, Golf Course Owners Association uh, that uh, said that we need a golf course open every day for the next five years, I think, in order to meet demand. Well, uh, we know what happened. And, and, and I, think, I think to some extent, you know, it was that, those types of, of indicators from the industry that encouraged uh, overbuilding. So there, there's, there's sort of been a re-sizing, uh, uh, a repricing of the industry. And, and it's not really so much that uh, there's too much golf or, 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 or too many facilities, but just just that we, we need to find where the right price points are. And like anything else, you know, the great thing about this country is there are people that uh, have opportunities in those types of environment. The, the really good operators are doing just fine. And uh, we're fortunate to, uh, to represent a few of them. During your tenure as president of the USGA, did that give you added perspective as to the health uh, of the golf course and golf community industry? It, it did. Uh, I was president in 2004 and five, and that was right about the time when the industry started uh, getting a little bit soft, and uh, the health of the game is, is, a, is a huge issue today. But um, you know, the focus that we're seeing in a lot of communities and a lot of organizations really is on the opportunities uh, that golf provides uh, for youth. Uh, it, it's a great sport to teach values. To uh, you know, the first tee uh, here in Tampa is doing a great job with that. Uh, you know, teaching teaching young kids, uh, boys and girls, about the uh, about the attributes of the game, the uh, the ethics, the uh, uh, self-confidence, uh, self-reliance, and so there's a lot of good things happening in that regard. So hopefully we're going to 
continue to, to, uh, to bring uh, younger people into the game and, uh, and, uh, and, and find a way to, to stay in the game. That's important. Part of your expertise is also waterfront development, is it not? And right. where does that stand these days? Well, there's always going to be a premium on waterfront. Uh, you know, there's only so much of it. So it's a, it's, there's a finite supply. Uh, there, it'll continue to be a, a very valuable asset. Again, it, it's becoming more difficult to, to, to develop. But you're seeing, uh, you know, you're seeing opportunities where older projects are being replaced by newer projects. Uh, fortunately, right now, capital is, is fairly accessible. And so um, there are opportunities out there. You just got to find the right project and the right developer. Now, is most of that development uh, residential or is it, again, resort? Well, a little bit of both. There's not, there's not a lot of new res residential projects coming on now. I mean, we, we had a glut of supply. And, uh, and, and, we, and we really need to absorb that before you're going to see a lot of new development. But if, even if you look at a place like Miami, uh, where it was terribly oversupplied, uh, there's been, that's moved through the pipeline pretty well, and we, we're seeing some new projects. We've seen some, some, some new projects, the new tower in, uh, down in Channel Side that's, uh, that's going to be coming out of the ground. So uh, there are opportunities. Actually, there is a residential building we are in right now. The upper floors of this exactly. particular building in Channel Side are that way. Um, You've lived in Tampa Bay your entire life. Uh, just about. Yeah. Since 1980. And so, well, yeah, that's your entire life. Come on. Not, not exactly, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Why have you stayed? Yeah, well, initially I, I, I moved back to Tampa because I, I married a girl from Tampa. So that was my first Good reason. reason. That's, a, that's the best reason. But uh, we've seen really a, a, an absolute transformation in this community in the 30 years we've been here. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful uh, it's a wonderful place to live. It's a wonderful business environment. Uh, we've, we've had great leadership through the year. Mayor Buckhorn is doing a fantastic job. You know, this is a great week showcasing uh, Tampa Bay, and it's just a great place to be. It's a great place to do business, and there's a whole new generation of entrepreneurs, that many of whom that, that you've talked to this week. And Fred Ridley, hopefully uh, we're fully in Lardner, a partner, and uh, are still a great golfer. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Fred, Let's thanks play for some time. Much. Okay, you know, just to the south of us, Manatee County, uh, is becoming sort of a sports training mecca. You may know about this. Kathy? 